<laughs> All right, okay. Well, that's it, folks. Good night. <laughs> Boy, this is, uh, this is what they call intimate theater. I could even walk down in here and look at all my friends. Yeah. Go, whoop. And you're all here, every one of you. Some of my family's here, too. Where are they? Can you stand up, gang? There, there, well, there's, oh, there's my, one of my daughter, my grandson. Yeah. yeah. All right, but, but I can't do this alone. So I'm going to call out somebody we all love and respect to help me out. And that's Miss Penny McQueen. Penny, there she is. All right, okay. All right. All right, sweetie, take over. Oh. <laughs> well, you all know I have, I have no ideas and no plans. <laughs> <laughs> so, Don. Yes, ma'am. We're going to talk. We're going to talk about your life. I've got all the questions. You know, I, I go with Don to a lot of shows and a lot of places, and I get to listen to all the questions that all the fans have for him. And I get them all down. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Right. We're going to talk about the, fa the questions that, that Don gets. So, one of the questions that I hear get asked a lot is, and I don't know why fans ask this, but I, I'm fascinated by it. Is, does, is Sam Butler really missing a finger? Oh, a lot of the ladies have asked about that little bugger. <laughs> and it starts like this. When I was 16 years old, in the 11th grade, all the guys that were a year or two older than me were in the service, had those nice uniforms. And those buggers had come back to school, and they'd get all the girls. All the girls go to these guys in uniforms. So the minute I turned 17 in October of 1945, I joined the Navy, got me a uniform, <laughs> came back to school. And you know what happened? I got some of those girls. Yeah. Yeah. That was nice. But then the Navy, they played me a bad trick. They put me on board a ship. And uh, one of my duties on that ship, well, my only duty on that ship was in the spud locker. I'm sure you guys know what the spud locker was. We peeled the potatoes, we diced the carrots, we cut up the celery and did all that stuff. And we had a, we had a potato peeling machine. Those old potatoes were pretty good size. Put them in there, turn that machine on. Let it go for a while, turn it off, take them out. And then you had to take out the eyes. And me and old Jock, we figured that was a lot of work to take out the eyes. So we, we were miracle workers. <laughs> we left that machine on about another 20 seconds. And you know what happened to those big old potatoes then? Come out like golf balls. <laughs> no eyes. <laughs> no eyes, no work. We had it made. Until my gunner's mate came down and said, Collier, you're in my handling room, and when you hear general quarters, you come down the, the, to the handling room, and you've got to work down there. Got that? I said, yes, sir. He said, but I'm going to offer you a deal. He says, whenever you hear general quarters, you find a place to hide. You run down there and hide, smoke, drink, whatever you want to do, and when, when it's secure, go back to the spud locker. Everything's fine. Is that all right? I said, yes, sir. He said, but in return, I want a sandwich. Anytime, anytime I want a sandwich, I want you to make me one. Because I know they got, I was right next to the galley. He said, I know they got cheese, ham, turkey, tuna fish, everything in there. When I want a sandwich, I'll come get one from you, okay? I said, okay. And he did that for a couple of days. Came to me the next day and he says, Collier? I said, yes, sir. He says, today, when we have general quarters, you've got to come down to the handling room and do your job. I said, okay. I said, why? 
He said, because the Admiral's on board and he wants to see every guy in his battle station. Said, yes, sir, I'll be there. That afternoon, we get general quarters. I ran down there. And I said, what do I do? He said, take those projectiles. That's the bombs. You take them off there and you put them in this hoist and they go up to the gun. The gun's up above. I said, okay. And I'm taking them out and I put them there and push the button. Up they go. Kid takes them out, puts them in the gun. Boom, they fire them. If you get ceasefire, you can't hear it down here. They hear it up there in the gun. And when it got ceasefire, this kid's got a bomb in his hands. Now he's supposed to throw that on the side. Well, he's not any smarter than me. <laughs> he takes that bomb and puts it back in the hoist. Now there's these five inch shell and they're time to go off in, I think 58 seconds. Some of you old buzzards might know that, I don't know. Drops it back in the hoist as I'm loading one down below. Now you're supposed to load them like this. Bam, like that with your fist. But I was loading them like this. And that thing came down like that, boom. Tap that little bugger and away it went. And I ran, I ran down to sick bay, they sewed it up and they, they sent me over to Long Beach Naval Hospital. I was there until it healed up. Then I got sent back home. You might say I did trade my finger for a sandwich. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Well, Don, I, I know some of the women here think that you're a very handsome man. Well, look at that. Got my purple shirt on, too. <laughs> and you, you went into the acting career. Mm -hmm. So one question, I, don't, I actually don't know if the women ask you this, but they ask me. What? They, if, oh, you're interested now. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> so they ask me if you ever had, and I don't know why they ask me, but they ask me if you ever had a casting couch experience. Casting couch. Casting. You know what a casting couch is? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what they are. Oh, maybe, maybe um, they want to know what side of the casting couch experience you Oh, want. I see. <laughs> well, I, uh, let, me, let me think now. I'm, I'm old now. I've got to think about these things that happened <laughs> a long time ago. But I think I did. I'm, I'm not, I did. I think I came close. And it happened like this. When I got out of the Navy, I went back out to the San Fernando Valley. My folks were working for an old actor named Francis Letterer. And old Francis had 400 acres out there in the valley. And he had mama cows, he had a lot of horses there. And they put me in charge of the cattle and the horses. And also old Francis had acting classes at night there at his ranch. And he'd have old Hollywood friends come out, men and women, they would read plays, they'd do scenes. And they asked me if I'd like to join. I said, yeah, sure, I'll get up there and join. A lot of cute girls are coming out to think. So I started with my scenes up there, and old Francis thought I was pretty good. Got me an interview at 20th Century Fox, went over there, no call back. Went to Paramount, did a scene over there, no call back. I went to Warner Brothers, nothing over there. Then I went to Selznick Studios, got a call back. I went there the next day, talked to the head of talent there, Mr. Henry Wilson. And Henry says, uh, I think you've got some talent, kid. Pleased to hear that. He says, we're going to put you on a limited contract, and you're going to start studying over here. I said, fine. And he said, I've got a bunch of people here. I've got Tab Hunter, got Rory Calhoun, got Guy Madison, got Rock Hudson. Had a bunch of people. And I thought, well, boy, that's a pretty nifty crowd I'll be mingling with. So I started in with my acting lessons over there. And he started inviting me, Henry Wilson started inviting me to come over for dinner over in Hollywood. Sunset Boulevard. At Ciro's. All the stars hung out at Ciro's. Macambo. Trocadero. Phantom Cock. All these wonderful nightclubs I'd heard about. Steaks that thick. I thought a steak was, you know, about, about like this, the steaks I had. These were like that. Seen all these stars, starlets over there. And one night, uh, Henry invited me to come over to his house for dinner. I went over to the house. Rock Hudson was there with his business manager. We had a nice dinner, tasty dinner. 
Then we'd go down to Beverly Hills, had a carnival down there. We're wandering around, me and Rock, hanging around Rock Hudson. Henry goes over and gets a couple of little baseball caps. One says Rock and one says Don. And we're walking around having fun, throwing baseballs at those phony milk bottles and shooting guns, all kinds of things. We had a lot of fun that night. We get back to Henry's house and Rock and his business manager go home. Just me and Henry there. And we're having a nightcap. And he says, Don, he says, you're going to be big in this business. And I said, well, that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm, that's what I want to do. He says, but uh, he says, your skin's kind of pasty looking. He says, you need a tan. I said, hell, I'll go down to the beach every day. I'll lay out in the backyard. I'll get me a tan. He says, I think we ought to start tonight. I said, well, the sun ain't shining. <laughs> and he says, it's OK. I, I can solve that problem. I said, how? He says, I've got a sun lamp. I want a sun lamp. Makes you a little uncomfortable, you know. And anyway, he says, I said, OK. He said, well, Take your shirt off, lay down in the bed. So I figured, well, okay. I go that far. I took my shirt off, laid down the bed, and uh, felt that old sun lamp come on my back. Felt kind of nice. And I'm laying there, and I'm thinking, all of a sudden, I felt drops of oil coming on my back. Yeah. And then a hand started rubbing me. Like that. And once in a while, that hand would go like that. And I thought, well, this is not too bad. Hand feels kind of good. All of a sudden, two hands coming out like this, rubbing like that. And oh my God, what, what, is, what have I got myself into? I, get to, I wonder how in the hell I get in it. And then he says, I think that side's done. He says, roll over. <laughs> well, I, that busted my balloon right there, I'll tell you. I sat up and uh, I says, uh, I says, Henry, I can't do this. I just can't do it. He said, don't you want to be a big star? I said, well, I want to work in the picture business. And he says, well, I said, I just, it ain't my back. I can't do it. And he says, well, I guess we'll have to part ways. I said, well, I guess we'll have to. So I put on my shirt, and I went home. I walked away from the picture business. That was the end of it for a while. Huh? That was the end of it for a while for That you. was the end of it for a while, yeah, yeah. And you went into something completely different. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, let me tell you about that. I, uh, 